what we're going to do now is do a, a first set on our, our lock adjustments for our cables. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this up, and I'm going to use this outside slider, the top of this bucket, as kind of a gauge. So I'm going to bring this up to, I'm, to the bottom of one of the lock cutouts. So for instance, I'm going to raise this up till this comes up here, and now this is flush to the bottom of this lock. Now, every floor is a little different, so we're not worried about the floor having a little bit of tilt on it, because what I want to do is adjust this to the height so that all the locks will fire at the same time. So when this is flush here, I'm going to walk over to this other side, and I'm going to look and I'm going to say, hey, this one is flush over here. Then we're going to walk to the other two in the back, and we'll make a note that this one is, is flush, this one is three quarters of an inch below being flush. So that means I need to tighten this nut at the top up by three quarters of an inch, bringing this up to where this is flush. And then all my locks will fire together. Now that's doing it when it's empty. The important part is you need to have a car on this to give the final adjustments. Because once you put a car on here, your cable is a twisted cable. So it's going to get tighter and it actually grows. And you're going to find the two on the end where the power unit is, they're going to grow a little more than these because they're the long cables. So uh, if you adjust this with nothing on it, you put a car on, then your locks are not going to be right. But you want to get close to start with. Then you drive a car on here, raise it up, and then do the same process. Bring it up to your flush at each one, tighten it up, and the locks will all fire together. See, now it's clicked. Now I'll lower it down on the lock. Now see how the slack gets in there? Now Jay can go up there and raise that up three quarters of an inch. Okay, we're back to this one where we're going to raise this up three quarters of an inch. Man, he's testing me. Okay, now as you notice, as the lift is coming up, you're going to hear the locks engage into the hole. We put high tension springs on there so that that is very powerful kickback into the holes. Now you'll notice that you hear them all firing pretty close together. That's good for right now. The next step you'll want to do is load your vehicle on it and then readjust it again so that everything clicks just like that with the car on it. We're going to show you how to operate this lift. Like I told you, there's a 110 power unit that's going to run a pump. You're going to push this button, which is going to run the motor, which activates the pump. Now the hydraulic is lifting it. This handle moves about an inch. Now I'm able to open up my locks. This opens up all four locks on each post at one time. There is a high tension spring that I talked about earlier on each lock, so if something went wrong with it, I let go of the handle and they're going to fire back with force. And that's what you want if something went wrong, them locks to engage in the very next hole that it could go to. Now to come down, you're going to hold this open and then you'll see on the back of your power unit here, there is a hydraulic release lever. You're going to push this in and that's going to lower the lift. What that's doing is letting this, the hydraulic fluid go back into the tank reservoir as the lift comes down. Now you would hold this open until you get past the last lock that's in the post. And then you can let go of this handle because there's no more lock cutouts for that lock to engage in. Now I can release the handle and it'll go all the way down to the floor without me having to work on my flexibility to go all the way to the floor with my handle. 